So the big news is I'm moving to Spine, which is a new technology for character animation. And uh, just looking here at my current character, Erin, uh, she's our heroine in this game. Uh, she can move around the screen pretty easily and pick objects up without any great difficulty. Uh, but the problem is that you can see there in that animation, um, she's sort of a, a little bit um, quirky in the way she moves around. But under the hood, uh, let's just have a look. Uh, what I actually have to do to make all of that happen is use these really large uh, sprite sheets. So just drilling down inside here uh, for all these reach down animations, I have dozens and dozens of all of these um, sprite sheets and uh, the walk cycle, again, um, you know, dozens and dozens of images. And uh, every time I want Erin to do a new movement, I have to uh, create these really large textures. And in order to try and keep the size down, I've got to keep this uh, distance, uh, the actual outline size of the sprites, to some kind of reasonable minimum, or otherwise it just explodes. Uh, and that's getting more and more difficult to manage. So hence why I've decided to move to Spine, which is a complete system uh, dedicated to computer games and uh, also to 2D animation. So uh, the guys that put it together are actually um, the ones behind uh, LibGDX. And these guys are game developers in their own right, so they certainly know exactly what they're doing when it comes to building software for game developers. Uh, and the system that they're using is quite different. I'll just show you how I arrive at my current um, animations. Basically, I use uh, Anime Studio, which is a cartoon animation program. And uh, I have a similar kind of system in that I have all these bones and I can pose the character and move them around and uh, I get the ability to create this walk cycle type animation where uh, the motion of the character is governed by these bones moving. Once I've created that character, I can then export the animation and uh, basically, I won't go through that process, but it creates uh, those sprite sheets that you saw earlier. Uh, for example, I have the, the head here, which is a separate component that um, I can move around by, say, grabbing hold of this bone, moving the head. Uh, it makes it very difficult because um, the animation program is not perfect for drawing. Um, I have to go inside the animation and uh, draw the character figures just using the tools that are available here, um, which are not always the best drawing tools, to be honest. Uh, they're not bad, but they're nothing like the vector programs that I would like to use. But uh, anyway, so that's given me a workflow to date, which has been OK. But um, with Spine, what I actually do is um, I can import any kind of images I want um, just by telling Spine where to actually find um, my image folder. And um, in this case, I've set it. Uh, to actually be an image folder of drawings that I've exported out of uh, Anime Studio. This is just so I can get going with Spine. Um, I will probably try to do some better drawings, but for now this gives me a quick uh, path for migrating out of Anime Studio for my in-game character animations. I'm probably still going to use the um, Anime Studio animations for my cutscenes, 
but the character animations are hopefully going to be a lot better. So basically with the spine what you do is you uh, go ahead and create the bones very similar to how you do in Anime Studio. Uh, one thing that I've actually been able to do which has um, worked out reasonably well is that because my character has all of these black outlines um, I've been able to um, create these patches which is the exact same technique that I use in uh, Anime Studio and uh, I just applied a bone to each patch and that allows me to create my animation um, just the same as I would have done in Anime Studio uh, and actually edit out all of those uh, black lines. So that's been quite nice. Uh, and um, I've just the last day I've I'm not the world's best animator. I've spent some time creating this um, animation, which is uh, just an initial first cut. Uh, and as you can see, it's actually not too bad. Um, so I get uh, all of the bone tweaking and all the rest of it, and I get that um, all set up inside of Spine's animate mode. Once I'm done with the animation, uh, I can go into Spine's uh, export menu here, and I tell it to export JSON data and also I'll say to create an atlas and uh, create a JSON file. I don't have a lot of animation data so I'm not going to worry about the space savings. I'll, I'll pre-print that and then I export it. So that's now going to pack up all of these textures for me and it's also going to create a uh, JSON fi data file now what I can do with that is um, rather than creating this huge enormous uh, sprite sheet, um, if I go into our my uh, little program here that I've just created as a test bed to just see how I can get going using Spine, uh, what I've done is imported uh, the skeleton which is the disassembled uh, body sprite images that have come out of the Anime Studio program and you can see it's tiny compared to uh, the sprite sheet atlas that I had uh, with all of those images from Anime Studio. And as well as that I've got an atlas file that describes the position and then here is all of the animation data. Uh, from there, it's actually really simple to uh, just import uh, what Spine calls its runtime, which is a bunch of uh, open source code. Um, pretty good. You basically just get to download uh, a zip file uh, from GitHub that includes all of the Spine code that you need. And then it just becomes a case uh, in my actual game code of uh, loading up a skeleton using the JSON file and the atlas. And then um, I really just simply um, tell it to run that particular animation, which in my case was called walk. And that's just the same name as I get from here. Uh, from my walk animation that I created. So once I have that, I should be able to just run this hopefully. So standard, there it is there. So as you can see, um, we get a really nice smooth, I mean I've got to do a bit of work, um, my patch layers are not completely aligned in a couple of places, um, but you can see I can get a really smooth animation so Kokos is animating at 60 frames a second and that is how smooth the animation will be. I will get 60 frames a second as all of these pieces of the skeleton get animated around the screen. And um, what's more, as I add in uh, animations I'll actually be able to blend them through so if I have the character reach up to take something uh, I can just simply blend that through into another animation. Um, 
I'll just see if I can run the demo program that comes with Spine. This is using uh, the test um, code that comes with the Spine demo. Um, by the way, I've bought the uh, commercial license to Spine, but you can uh, try it out by editing co editing uh, the, the sample models, and you can also download these runtimes for free. Uh, they're just open source. The only thing that you need to pay for a Spine license for, obviously, is when you want to animate your own models and export them into your own code, as I've done. Uh, but you are perfectly able to download and uh, play around with this. So um, what this example does is it actually loads the walk animation and the jump animation and then mixes the two of them together after a delay. Uh, so let's just see if we can see what that looks like. This is using the spine guy's uh, spine animation. So there we see our little guy. He's just uh, smoothly walking and then jumping. And that is pretty awesome, I must say, because uh, there's no sort of hesitation as you switch between sprite sheets or uh, loading up uh, different uh, resources or anything like that. Um, at the moment, I've got it running in the debug mode. Uh, which means that I can see all of the uh, bones, which gives me an ability to just mess around and figure out any animation problems that I might be having. Okay, so, well, that is Spine, and I must say I'm very impressed. Thanks, Esoteric Software. Um, there's a couple of other uh, changes coming up, but um, I'm hoping they don't take too much out of my development schedule. And um, he's hoping that I'll be able to still hit my deadline of December this year. Okay, guys, thanks for listening and uh, happy hacking. Bye.